All right, gentlemen, uh, today is going to be a quick video about making the most out of your reports with FLIR Thermal Studio. There are a myriad of options that you can get. There's a lot of cool uh, features that you can pay for, but honestly, I use the uh, $0 starter package and I just work around all of the limitations. I write really good reports, the customers seem to like my reports, but um, I don't use any of these extra functions. You will occasionally find some limitations that you might want to work around and if your company can afford it, yeah, go ahead and buy the, the upgraded packages. But today I want to talk to you about the workarounds uh, when using the FLIR starter bundle for FLIR Thermal Studio. So let's get started here. Um, as you can see, I already have a couple uh, images that I shot on a FLIR T640. Obviously this uh, FLIR Thermal Studio suite works with most of the FLIR cameras, definitely all the professional ones. There's a handful of uh, cameras that I don't think they just output enough information to work with this software. So like they're, they're lower end cameras and they're like um, the, the hobby grade ones, the ones that plug into your smartphone. I don't necessarily think those output enough information to, uh, to be worthwhile to write a big, uh, beautiful professional, uh, professional report. But any of the T series, any of the professional ones, they'll all work for this. As I'm going through, as I'm doing my, my scan, I will make sure that I have really good notes on what all of my images are, because especially if you're doing a big one, a big customer, you're gonna have hundreds of panels, you're gonna take thousands of pictures, you're not gonna remember what they all are. So uh, I take really good notes as I'm going. Sometimes I'll have to do this on a clipboard and then copy it over to Excel. Uh, I find it a little bit easier if I can do it straight on Excel. And this goes for any camera, any software, anytime I'm doing a, an IR scan, I always try to record um, the name of the, where I am, the panel name, uh, the image number every time I take an image, and then a, a quick comment of what I took a picture of and why. And uh, this is gonna help us out a lot later. So let's get into it. Let's launch uh, FLIR Thermal Studio. So this is the home page that you're gonna see. We're gonna go create a blank report. Uh, is that what I want to do? Yeah. And then go to your library and obviously use this pane over here to navigate to um, your the images that you want to upload. So we're going to highlight the images. I'm going to go to this report, send that to the report. Now, uh, this is one limitation with the free version that you don't have with the professional ver or the paid versions. They only give you a handful of templates and most of them are terrible. Uh, I use this one right here. This is the thermal photo details. It's just the one every single report I ever write comes out of this template. Um, the other templates have eh, other limitations. <laughs> so on here, on our template, uh, as it pulls in the details, uh, as you can see, we've got our, our thermal image and then we've got our visual light image. Again, most of the T-series, most of the pro cameras that they sell, um, they take two images. Every time you snap a picture, it takes two images, um, which is sort of interesting. So if you look at like the image here, the JPEG that it saves, it literally saves us as a JPEG and there's no, uh, let's see the properties here. Yeah, there's no, way to know uh, that there's another you know image in this at all it literally just looks like one image um, but all that extra detail so the, the the temperature at every pixel is recorded individually and that's encoded in the xif data and then the visual light jpeg uh, is saved on top of that and that is also encoded in here but you can't see that until you open it up in FLIR thermal studio so that's sort of an interesting thing to see um, so on here, we've got a couple things that we can fill out. Um, really all I'm going to worry about is getting the, the, the most information out of this as I possibly can. But if I double click on the thermal image, it takes me to this like really blown up version of it. And then I've got a lot more information of this over here. So what I want to do in this case, this is uh, a fuse holder. I saw one of the fuses was hot, so what we're going to do is we're going to change the 
spots on here. Ah, it's this one. So we're going to have spot meter, and I really want to do comparison spots because I want to compare all three phases to each other. So this phase, or the C phase, spot one is 29 degrees, spot three is 23.6 degrees, right? So I can very quickly make a comparison like that and I make it really easy to see on the report that we're doing a comparison by adding uh, more spot meters. Now, uh, sometimes it depends on how your camera is set up. Sometimes you'll have a box like this when you open it up. Um, really all you need to do and it's just right click and remove that box it makes it really easy and then you can drag the spot meters in it depends how you shoot some people like to shoot with the the box some people like to shoot um where it just highlights the the hot spot um it doesn't really matter in the camera because we can come back and change it in post like this so that's what i like to do and then the other thing that we'll need to do is on our text annotations uh this is where we're going to put in those comments so we're going to go um, obviously, if you have a big long file of text annotations, there is a way that you can import that whole file and dump it into this image, and that's really cool. But it's a pro feature that doesn't work with the free version of the software, or it kind of does, but they've hamstrung it. So anyway, just manually click do uh, click this button that says add text annotation. Um, for whatever reason, you always need to put a key number in. I pretty much just put one every time. Um, and I will go back to my notes that I saved on this Excel sheet. And for this one, I'm just going to copy exactly what I said in my notes. So copy that, uh, feed pump C phase fuse, delta T of five C at top terminal. So that sounds good to me. Now we can actually double check and see, so this is about 24 degrees this is about 29 degrees so my initial assumption that that was a 5c uh, temperature difference that looks correct so then we're gonna hit save and check this out we go save oops save close and now it pops up on the report page so when we're looking at this here I get my three spot measurements it shows you on the image where those three spot measurements are and then I've got my annotation, my note. This is why I took the picture. This is the problem, whatever it is. Um, so let's scroll down. Uh, we'll do the same thing here. So I'm just gonna double click on this image. I can move, I can just click and drag the existing spot to wherever the hottest spot is. This is really funny because it's a thermostat, so it controls a small heater, and the wire was actually heater, uh, was actually <laughs> warmer than the heater was. So that's uh it's an interesting thing to snap a picture of. Uh, thermostat, blah, 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 3C on terminal L. So that sounds like a good thing to put in my text annotations as a comment. Okay, and we'll hit save and then close. And I think I have one more of these to do that I'll show you guys. Um, and now obviously this is not the only stuff that I saw that day. These weren't the only issues that this customer had, but uh, for the sake of brevity, we're gonna we're gonna fly through this real quick. All right. And make sure we put a key in. If you don't put like a number one or a, even like a space in there, and you hit save for whatever reason, it deletes the annotation. I'm. Oh, so another thing. If you want to save your work and come back to it later, um, we'll click on home. No, we'll click on file save as, and then you can save a report file, which is different than the PDF that this exports. So I can come back to this report file and it has all this, all this information here. So I can keep working on it, keep tweaking it if I need to, or, Oh, Hey, I'm, I'm done for a week, but I'm going to come back on Monday and add some more pictures. Um, you can obviously, uh, save this report file, save as report, and then come back to it later, which is really nice. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to go export to PDF and find the file that I saved this under. So navigate to where we want to save it. And we're going to call this sample report images. All right. And this is going to export as a PDF. So that's important to note because we're, we're exporting it. We're not, we're not saving it as this, or we're not saving a, uh, 
we're not saving a project that we can come back to. I'm exporting this as a PDF file that I'm going to stick in my report when we're done. All right, and like I said, uh, I sort of fat fingered this and so now I have a blank page that I need to get rid of. Um, I'll show you how to get rid of that in just a second. So we'll close this, go back to my file browser. And so I've got my, uh, my notes here. And one of the things that customers really like, I'm not sure why this is clicking off center. One of the things that customers do tend to like is uh, knowing how much of a problem each image is. So when we go to our cover letter, one of the things that I always make sure I have in my cover letter, um, it's got a nice cover page. That's really important. If you're, if the company that you work for doesn't have one of these already, eh, it's pretty easy. Just whack a picture in there and say, hey, this is, you know, an IR scan report, whatever. Um, we've got to have our, our cover letter. We're going to address the customer say, hey, this is what you paid us to do. This is when we we're out here. Here's how you contact me if you have any questions. Um, and then our executive summary. This is really where you're going to start detailing the work that we did. If we found any issues, found something that needs to be addressed right away. And then uh, one of the biggest things, one of the most important things I would say is what spec are you doing this work to? So for me, most of the time, I'm going to be following the NIDA MTS um, specifications. So this says, hey, if I've got a delta T between similar components under load, that's uh, 1 to 3C. Okay, it's possible deficiency. 4 to 15C, a probable deficiency. We should really address this pretty soon. Um, over 15C between similar loads, like we need to fix this right away. And then delta T over ambient. And I found these temperatures uh, sort of, it's really all over the place. It depends what I'm looking at. Like there's a lot of things, hey, if I'm looking at, you know, a piece of bus bar, that it's got like 20 amps of load on it, like I shouldn't expect any variation over uh, ambient at all. And if I've got, you know, a 15C rise over ambient, well, if I've only got like a tiny bit of load on it, that's something I need to address right away. Like that's definitely an issue. So I don't know, I sort of take these with a grain of salt, but the, the delta T between similar loads like that um, is generally what I, what I, generally what I go off of. Anyway, uh, definitely you can take a screenshot of the, the spec document that you're um, performing the scan to. Uh, you, you need to have some basis for where your results and recommendations are coming from. So I always take a, a screenshot of my, uh, the spec that I'm testing this to, and I will include that in my report. So the way that I have set mine up, I've got these, uh, obviously I've got the Delta T, in my comment here, I'm just going to say, hey, my priority for these, uh, that first one was 5C, so we're going to call it a priority 3. Uh, second one was 3C, so eh, call it a 4. And last one was 4C, so we're going to call that priority 3. So we'll save this. And now what I want to do is I want to print this as a PDF. So we're going to print, da -da 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 -da, print PDF. And we're going to print that to the same folder that the rest of our report's in. Okay, report notes. All right, cool. And now what we're going to do is we're going to close all this. Recording. Okay. So I've got my report notes, my sample cover letter, and my uh, report images. That is what came out of FLIR Thermal Studio. So we're going to highlight all these. We're going to combine files. Um, now I'm using uh nitro you can use adobe they all work fine there's some i would definitely say adobe is better but nitro is cheaper so we're gonna call this my sample ir report final and we've got our cover image our cover letter our executive summary, uh, again, if we had any major deficiencies, I would note that out in here. I've got the spec that I'm testing it to. This is really important. This is my uh, page with the test notes on it, and this has the page numbers for the rest of the images. And of course, this one, I need to delete this blank page that came up. Delete, current page, 
That brings everything else up. And look at that. So I've got an easily readable report um, in here. You can say, hey, this, this image correlates to this building, correlates to this panel. Uh, everything looks good here. This is the actual image that I'm looking at. Uh, this is, you know, the, the, the notes for this image. Everything lines up. So this is a really clean report. It's a really easy way to, to work around not having any of the, the paid features. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, that's all I have for you today. I hope this helps. I hope you guys can make some uh, really nice reports, make your customers happy with uh, the work that you guys uh, with the work that you guys do. Obviously, with a lot of things in testing, they don't necessarily pay you to do the job. They pay you for the report. They they pay you to prove to insurance that it's not going to blow up when we turn it on. This, I think, it, it's it's helped me a lot, and I've I've kind of stumbled through how to get around some of the the issues with the free version but uh, this is what i use and hopefully it works for you guys too i'm new to this whole youtube thing so uh, a like share subscribe give me a comment tell me if there's something that you guys would do better it helps helps quite a bit it means the world to me so thanks and i'll see you on the next one